again, as usual, we'll start with the calibrating light motivations. And before that, we'll try to quiet our mind by watching the breath for a few moments. So then we can contemplate and think, you know, until we overcome the very root of all the delusions, it's very hard to overcome the delusions. It's never ending, endless. Therefore, in order to overcome all the afflictive emotion and delusion completely permanently, we need to cut the very root of all these afflictive emotions. The fundamental ignorance. That grabs and apprehend the object to exist inherently. And in order to cut that fundamental ignorance, we need to cultivate and develop the sort of wisdom relaxing the emptiness. that relies non-existent or inherent existing objects. And to cultivate that wisdom, we need to study, reflect, contemplate, meditate. With that hope and purpose that we have gathered here together to study and engage in discussions. And may our air for coming together and studying together become cause and conditions to actualize the Bodhicitta the convention, relative or conventional and ultimate bodhicitta. And gradually the five path and 10 bodhis. Eventually may it be cause and condition to achieve fully awakened state. So we can be greatest help and benefit to each and every sentient beings without any partiality. Okay, so then we can do the
John, quick. <laughs> John, if it, you're having trouble, I have it. Uh, I have the opening prayers on my. Oh, okay. <laughs> So you see, when I shout, then he is quick. <laughs> <laughs> to the founder, the endowed transgender destroyer, the one gone beyond the four destroyer, the completely perfect, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge, and it would conduct Sugata, nor of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of God and human beings, to you, the complete and fully awakened one, the endowed and standard destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offering, and go for refuge. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy with respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms in all aspects. With the supreme faith, I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action. Perform only perfect virtuous action. Subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of Buddha, a star, a visual, a relation, a flame of a lamp, an illusion, a drop of a dew, a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, sea condition, things as such. Through this matter, may sentient beings attain the rank of seeing, subdue the four of faults, and be delivered from the samsaric ocean, perturbed by the wave of aging, sickness, and death. I prostrate to the Arya uh, Triple Gem. Thus did I hear one time that Bhagavan was dwelling on the mass of Vulture Mountain in Rasgriha, together with the community of monks and great community of both sects. At that time, Dabak one was observing the concentration of the category of phenomena for profound perception. Also, at that time, the both of the master by Arya Avalokishora looked upon the very practice of profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregate also as empty or inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the venerable Shariputra said this to the both of the master by Arya Avalokishora How should any son of the lineage strength who wish to practice the activities of profound perfection of wisdom? He said that in a book. Both Sadhva Mahasadva Arya Avalokeshwara said this to the Venerable Sharitidi Putra. Sharitputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wish to practice the activities of profound perfection of wisdom, should look upon it like this correctly and repeatedly be holding those five aggregate also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness form. Emptiness not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, composition of factors and consciousness are empty. Shariputta, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness without courage, stay unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, no division, not fulfilled. Shariputta, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no composition of factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no order, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomena. There's no eye element and so on up to end, including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There's no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, so on and up to end, including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there's no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There's no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non attainment. Shariputta, therefore, because there is no attainment, both sides of rely on dwelling the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having I mean, completely passed beyond error, they reach the in point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in three times also manifestly completely awake and unsurprised for perfect, complete enlightenment and reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the mantra, the unsurprised mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that totally pacifies all suffering, should be known as truth since it is not false. The mantra of perfection of wisdom is declared. Shariputta, the Bosa master, should train in this profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from the concentration, commanded the Bosa master by Arya Avalokishara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, is it like that? Is it like that? One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as we were indicated. Even Tathagadas rejoiced. 
the Bagun having thus spoken, the venerable Sharidi put the Bosa of a master of Ara of Lavishora, and those surrounding the entire alone of the world of God, women, Asura, and Gandavas were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bagwan. We can go to the next one. Sashi Pege Chose Meto Tare Lalege Yinde Gembade Sange Sindu Mide Ua Dokun Namada Sang Che Parasho Yedam Guru Ranam and Dalakani Atayam. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merits I create to listen to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient. <laughs> <clears throat> hmm. So, in presenting uh, selflessness, so then, uh, you know, that's um, presenting the first selflessness of person and phenomena, and then within the um, presenting the selflessness of the persons, then, you know, um, the selflessness of the person itself, and then first the selfness, selflessness of the, the mind, you know. Um, so, which we feel, you know, is mind, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, and within the, when, when the presenting or establishing or presenting the selfness of persons, then we went through mainly two different reasoning. Uh, one, we went through the Nagarjunas, where he does this excel, um, analyze, or maybe three, um, but one without much details. Uh, one of the analyses that we went through with Nagarjuna does, with the uh, analyzing with the persons is within the, the our, you know, six elements, within the six, each of is each of those is six, six elements, or whether it's a collections of, the six elements and then coming to conclusion is neither either of the six elements, neither is the collection of six elements, and therefore the person is empty of inherent existence or the person's non-inherent existence. And so we did that one analysis. And then uh, there was one analysis where Lama Tsongkhapa didn't go so detailed in middle Lamrim, but you, as I mentioned, you, you see that more detail in the uh, Great Lamri, the analysis of the seven, seven analysis of the, um, the chariot, you know, chariot. Um, and so I, I think I use the car, but chariot. So seven analysis, you know. Um, and then we just finished the one analysis that has four essential point and uh, the analysis whether the person is one with whether it's the one with inherent the aggregate or whether it's separate from inherently separate from the aggregate. So we, through that analysis, then coming to conclusions, since the, um, the person is neither one with the, inherently neither one with the aggregate, because if it is one with it, there are many faults, and neither is separate from the aggregate, because if it's inherently separate, then there are many other faults, and therefore coming to understanding that, um, is empty of inherent existence, uh, empty of inherent existence. So I think we, uh, we came to that, we just completed that. Um, um, and then second is, you know, uh, mind, because like first we have sense of me and after we have sense of I or me, then there's sense of mind, you know, mind, you know, this is, no, I know. Uh, and so then um, it's, it's kind of establishing the emptiness or separateness of the mind. And here, Amazon Kaba explained the, 
you can use the same reasoning logic that we use to the persons when you to the even the mind you know there is you don't same reasoning and logic or investigation can be equally effective when you are doing with the mind you know no, uh, the same that we did for the person itself so again uh, when you talk about mind you know let's let's talk about you know um, my body my mind my experience you know whatever um, when we, we when we try to do the same analysis is same whatever those objects are that is mine you know whatever those objects that is mine all of those objects are um, all of those objects has a its own parts there's no object that it doesn't have any parts that there is no object that's independent that does not depend on its parts any objects any object whatever objects of your mind all of them exist by depending on many um its parts okay so if you analyze whether that object itself that possess many parts is that object one with the each of those parts inherently or whether it is uh, separate from those parts if you do same analysis then it comes to the same conclusion that would be the person with the, with the aggregate if it is if it become inherently one with its part then as, as much as there's many parts that object would become many or just as there's just one object all part become just one there isn't many parts so if it is into one you know and then there are many other um there will be many other faults as well you know um if it's if it is uh, you know one part of that one part of that is that objects then it can't be because that one part cannot function as that objects you know each of each of one part cannot function as the objects so it can't be that objects with if it doesn't have that function of that objects so each of part is not there but uh, if you say each all the parts each of all the parts are there then then again there will be too many objects just as there are many parts you know and then if it is separate inherently separate from those parts then again there is a, it will be unrelated uh, uh, unrelated unconnected you know and so then therefore again um, if something happens to the part then you can't say it happened to that object you know but when one of the part breaks you say the objects are broken isn't it in our conventional world um, because they are related you know they are related and but if it's inherently separate they wouldn't have that relationship so you know um, when something some part some of those part break then it wouldn't be that object breaking it you know so because there's no no connection with that there will be that false and many other false um, the other false is you know if you if you take away each of the parts and if you're trying to find the objects you cannot find the object outside of that each of those parts so if it is separate from those parts then you should be able to find even when you take away each part you should be able to pinpoint and find the objects there but if we take away each part you cannot find that objects and so therefore is neither one with the object neither is separate from the object inherently and so if it is not inherently one or separate from the is part then is not in hidden existence so again so coming with the same reasoning logic that we use for the persons to the mind and through that then um uh yeah so that is you know uh verse number i mean um page number 241 for those who have the the pdf and i don't know in the book what is the page for those who have book uh, Geshela, it's on um, page 357. Okay, so yeah. <clears throat> mm. So then, you know, um, 
the example here given is, you know, also one, one way of establishing that mind does not, so-called mind does not exist inherently because the person does not exist inherently. If there's no person, inherently exist person, then there is no inherent existence of that, that something that belongs to that person because they're not that not person. So they give an example of, you know, barren woman's son, you know, example of non-existence, you know. If there is no barren woman son, then there wouldn't be the eyes or uh, nose or mouth of that son because there is no su such son. So similarly, if there is no inherent persons, then there is no inherent existence of belonging of that person because there is no that person. So there is no mind of that. So that is another another analyze. And so you can see that in a uh, root verses of wisdom in Nagarjuna where it says. If the eye does not exist, how possible they could mind exist, you know? So if the eye does not exist inherently, then there is there's no way inherently exists in the mind, you know? Um, and also in the commentary on middle way by the Chandrakiti, it also said, you know, if there's no agent, then there is no actions. If there's no subject or agent, then of course there is no action that is created by the subject or, uh, or agent to to engage in some action. You need to have the um, the agent or the subjects, you know. Um, in same way, here the subjects or the agent is the self. Okay, if there is no self, the subject action, then there is no mind. That is like the actions that uh, that is coming from that su that subject that uh, agent, you know. Therefore, by seeing the I and mind as empty, the yogi would completely liberate it. So when you understand, you know, um, the selflessness of the persons and the mind, then the yogi can overcome the fundamental ignorance. By having overcome the fundamental ignorance, one can overcome all the afflictive emotion that arises from that fundamental ignorance. And thereby, the practitioner or yogi can achieve you know, liberation, enlightenment, you know, and then that become possible. Enlightenment, liberation pos become possible because there is possible to end the all the afflictive emotions. And there is possible to end the, all the afflictive emotions because there's possible to um, overcome the very root of all those afflictive emotions, the fundamental ignorance. So, mm, So when we talk about the selfless of person, so here is say, you know, we have to, when we say person is, we start with ourselves, but not only us, all other living beings, all other uh, sentient beings from the, all the six realms, the, the being of all the six realms, um, and as well as the emptiness of all six realms, beings, the emptiness of the Arhat, the emptiness of the, the Buddha himself, you know, so, so when we say emptiness of person, so it cover all of those, all of that. So, um, and then here, when he said mind, there is no inherently existing mind, um, you know, that exists from its own side by its own um, power, um, you know, um, so I already discussed that better, um, which is, um, you know, um, their aggregates, whether it's contaminated or uncontaminated aggregates. For example, the ordinary sentient beings, uh, you know, they are dissonated or imputed on the basis of their contaminated aggregate. Okay. Whereas like enlightened beings such as Buddha is dissonated or imputed on the basis of uncontaminated aggregates. Yeah. And, but if you try to find within the basis of that dissonation or, or impute, 
that is either the uh, contaminated aggregate or uncontaminated aggregate. Yeah, you cannot find within each of those uh, within the each of those aggregates or outside of those aggregates. So that is so you use that reasoning and logics to analyze and to understand and realize the um, selflessness. Mm -hmm. So next one comes, you know, um, persons or inner objects appearing like illusions. So you often hear in a uh, you know Buddhist scriptures. Uh, you know, all phenomena are like illusion, all phenomena are like a dream, all phenomena are like uh, hallucinations, like a mirage, um, like a, uh, all, all different, like an echo, uh, echo, you know, uh, and so many different examples that it's given. So here, um, Lama Tsongkhai is going to explain what it means like a illusions, because sometimes there is a lot of misunderstanding about that term, what is, what is like being like illusions. There's a mistaken understanding or, or uh, interpretations of what, and so here Lama Tsongkha is going to clarify what is mistaken of appearance like illusions and what is the unmistaken understanding of appearance like illusions or like dream, okay? So that is where Lama Tsongkha is going to explain. And I think, um, this when we have understanding of all phenomena are like an illusion like a dream it, it helps us to understanding that over to to negate this the idea of emptiness being nihilism you know that nothing exists you know so it it helps us to um clear that misunderstanding so so within that um the third point has two points, you know, and so it is there. I won't, I don't need to read it. And first I have two, you know, um, indicating the meaning of saying like illusion. So it has two. And then unmistaken manner of appearing like an illusion. So then uh, in the one of the sutra, in the King of Concentration Sutra, so it gives many examples. Here you see like a mirage, like a Gandhava city like a illusions, just as a dream, meditate on sign as empty of entity, not all phenomena like this. So, you know, um, we try to uh, meditate on non inherent existing of all phenomena, while they are non-existing, while they are non inherently existing, at the same time, they all are like an illusion, like a dream, um, like a mirage like a Gandhava cities. And so you see, you see in that sutra of Buddha mentioning of that. And then again, in the mother of the victors, that is the, um, the wisdom sutra, you know, the wisdom sutras. So also in, it is also taught that all phenomena from form, so physical form, through exalted knower of all expect. So exalted knower, like the Buddha, you know, from, from the physical form to enlightenment all of them are uh, like an illusion like a dream so it has buddha explained many times in um, the wisdom sutras and one of the prayer that we just recited today that comes at the very beginning of teaching that very you often hear that comes from basrakata sutra and similar you know they give many examples like a star, a visual vibration, a flame of lamb, an illusion, a drop of dew or bubble, a dream, flash of lightning and cloud, sea condition, things as such. So you see in many different um, sutras, the, the Buddha giving that example or analogies. Um, well. So here Lama Tsongkhapa says, there are two meaning of what it means like a, um, being like an illusions, you know, okay? When we describe in all these sutras or in the teachings, any, any teachings, when they give example, it is like an illusion, it is like a dream. So then Lama Tsongkhapa, there's two meaning of that. One meaning is, for example, emptiness itself, the ultimate reality or emptiness itself. Even though it, ex it exists, you know, merely it exists. It, it merely exists. At the same time, 
while it merely exists is MJ of inherent nature. Is MJ of inherent nature. So that is one meaning of um, um, like a illusions. Okay, is like a illusions. No, uh, but the other one is you know second one is something like illusion, like appearance. You know. Um, which appear, the object appear, okay, the object appear, and not only object appear, the individual object has its own functionings due to many cause conditions, due to many factors. So it appears, the or different individual object appear to our mind. There's appearance of that object. Not only there's appearance, it has its own individual functioning of different objects, individual different objects. And those functioning happens because of many cause, condition, many factors. So while there is that appearance and functioning at the same time is empty of inherent nature. This appearance and functioning at the same time is empty of inherent nature. And because of that, then it is like an illusions. That appearance like an illusions. And it, the mean, that will come further later. And so Lama Tsongkhapa says, when he is going to explain here about what it is like a, like an illusion, he's going to explain more of the second one. Second one, where there is the appearance and the functioning of that at the same time is empty of inherent nature. So, um, so he's going to explain that on, on touch on that, discuss on that. And, I think maybe it will come, but just to give example, just at the very beginning, you know, for example, um, illusions, you know, due to many causes and conditions, there's a creation of illusion, the appearance of illusion. Magician, you know, he does some kind of magics, you know, some kind of whatever, whether he's using some kind of um, tricks, whatever kind of trick, whether he's using any kind of mantra substance or any kind of trick, there are many things that come together. And then there is the person who is watching it, that trick. And so due to many cause and condition, there's appearance of that magic or that illusions. And there's a functioning of that illusions. Different illusion, different magic are different functionings. You know, if, if magician create a, you know, kind of growling, um, tiger, we might be fearful, you know, even though it's magic, it is just illusions, you know, and if you create a very, you know, nice singing bird, we might like here, we want to hear it, we want to see it. So it has a different functioning, different effect, even though it's illusions, it has different functions due to many different causes and conditions. So there's appearance, while there's appearance, but if we analyze, there's no real tiger, there's no real bird. It's just a trick. So it is empty of that appearance. What appears is like tiger or the bird, but is totally empty of such bird and such tiger. So while there is appearance, there is empty. So to give that example, so that is the same, we apply that with all all other phenomena, you know, we apply with all other phenomena so where there is a appearance of the objects and functioning of individual objects. At the same time, they are empty of inherent nature. And so that is like a, uh, like an illusion. So that is the meaning of that, like, like the illusions. Okay. Mm. So, and I, I can Lama Tsongkhapa will go quite detail and I think it's very, very, um, important to understand this view so then we don't fall in any of the stream if we don't understand how all phenomena like illusions some sometimes then when we say everything is like empty of inherent nature there's a there's a danger of falling into one stream stream of nihilism and then when we say there is existence then again there is a, a danger of falling in the other extreme of you know um, uh, what uh, internalism, in 
internalism, what do you call your top? Uh, permanent. Um, uh, yeah, sometimes it's also used for permanent. Internalism? Huh? The opposite Inter of nihilism Inter is. Eternalism. Eternalism. Yeah. yeah, internalism. So there is. And so when you understand that it's like an illusion, then you don't fall into any of those any of those extremes. And so that really helped us to understand what emptiness is really about, you know, without falling into one of the um, extreme, okay? Uh, so in order to understand, you know, um, the phenomena or the appearance to be like illusion. So there is two, important necessary factors, you know, um, so where the object appears and it has its functioning at the same time is empty of inherent nature, two things. There's empty of inherent nature, there's emptiness, at the same time there's appearance. Okay, there's appearance, okay. Um, and when there is an appearance, when we say there is appearance, so then here, appearance here refer to something that exists, that has its own, due to many cause, conditions, factors, it has its functioning, okay, as it is. That everything that appear to our mind well, there is appearance, does not always become like an illusion. When we say like an illusion, we are giving example something that exists. Something that does not exist the way it appears to our mind, but it does exist. So here the example giving is the uh, horn, horn of the rabbit, you know, as I mentioned before, classical example. Horn of the rabbit is example non-existence. So for someone's mind, there can be appearance of horn of uh, horn on the rabbit, you know, some from distant, you see the long ears of the rabbit and someone can say, so, oh, there is a horn. Do you get it? We can get confused from distant, you know, because some of their ears, I think especially the jack rabbit, they are so long, you know, so because the ear is so long, and if you look from distance, it might appear as a horn, you know? So there is appearance of horn on the rabbit, but the horn on rabbit does not exist, even though there is appearance, okay? So everything that appear does not exist, okay? Everything that appear or our mind does not exist. Um, so therefore, something that would uh, here, um, Laman von Kavas uh, here says, you know, however, if objects utterly non-existent, even as a mere appearance, um, just like the horn of rabbit or the son of the barren woman, and if despite appearance, it does not appear that an object is empty of true existence as appear, then the meaning of it being illusion like is also not appear to the mind. Mm. So, so there is a, one, there's the appearance of the objects, okay? And uh, functioning, as I mentioned, the objects appearing and functioning of that individual object, and at the same time, is empty of inherent nature. So it, those both need to be there in order to have a, correct understanding of like illusion like the appearance of illusion like those two different uh, I don't know what you call um, factors those two factors need to be there if you miss one of those factors then it cannot be like illusion like you know if there is a understanding let's say you have understanding of the empty of inherent nature but if there's no appearance then it is not like the appearance like illusion that is describing here. But even there is appearance of the object, if you don't have the uh, 
uh, understanding or knowing of MD of inherently natural, then again, one, one part is missing. So then it, again, it cannot be appearance like illusion that is describing. So basically what Lama Tsongkhapa was saying, you need those both factors to be, to be, to be able to understand correctly what it means like appearance like a illusions. The appearance and the empty of inherent existence, the both factors need to come. Yes, Sangha? So Geshe-la, so then um, is it correct to say that Lama Tsongkhapa here is just eliminate, you know, with the horns of a rabbit example, et cetera, he's eliminating a wrong consciousness basically, right? So he's eliminate. so if you have a correct, I mean, if you have a, um, a um, I don't know what the word is, correct, non-mistaken consciousness, then it should have both these factors and then it can realize emptiness. Um, yes. Then it can see the true nature. The, the yes. To have a correct understanding of appearance like illusions, then you need to have those factors. If you are missing one of those factors, then you don't have the correct understanding of appearance like illusions that is describing here. You know, so in order to have that unmistaken understanding or meaning of that, then you need to understand that the need of those both factors. You know, um, for example, why why Lama Tsongkhapa gives that example of horn, you know, uh, horn on the rabbit and the son of the barren woman in his, those are examples non-existence. So even though those both of them are empty of inherently nature, they both are empty of inherent nature. Okay. Even though they are empty of inherent nature, they are empty of inherent nature, but it doesn't have the appearance and functioning of a phenomena because they are not existence. So it doesn't have the appearance and functioning. So there is, while it has the empty part, but it doesn't have that appearance part, you know? So here Lama Zonga is making kind of clarity that where you need both appearance and empty both. So that is why he's giving that example because in that cases, there's empty, you know, you can, you can understand even there are empty of in, inherent nature because nothing exists in inherent nature, even non-existent empty of inherent nature. But what is missing in that part is then that, that appearance that can appear and functions as a objects. So I think that is where it is, why that example is taken. Mm. Yeah. Can you can you have something the other way around that it has appearance and function but not empty of inherent existence? That's not no. possible, right? No, either. Right. Is, okay. Yeah. Okay. Everything is empty of inherent nature. Yeah. Yeah, that is not possible. Mm. So I think maybe that is why Lama Zongaba does not give that example here. Mm -hmm. mm. So here, uh, giving the how it is like, uh, you know, resemble the example of illusion. So the way in which phenomena resemble illusions. Um, so magician is creating, I can, uh, you know, horse and elephant, you know, through his trick, whatever many things that he need to create that um, illusions, that magic, that trick, you know, I'm sure that he has many, many um, factors that he takes. And, and um, there is also the person who is looking at that, if, you know, uh, at that too. So when you look at that, there's undeniable the appearance for those people, the audience who are looking at that, the magicians, there's undeniable appearance of the horse, or elephant, whatever the magician is creating, you know, we cannot deny that there is appearance of that to the audience. Okay, there's appearance. Mm. Even though, yeah, even though, even though they are empty of real horse and real, real elephant, but there is appearance that is undeniable. 
yeah even though there is no horse slightest of horse or elephant from the very beginning from the start they have never been in that in that room where the magicians is creating that even though they, it has never been there but still through his many cause condition trick then there is appearance of that to our mind to our eye our eye consciousness undeniable in the same way so that giving an example in the same way all phenomena has been empty of in here empty from inherent in existence from the very start it is not like they were inherent existence one time and then now it is become non inherent existence as we analyze do you get it are we getting it is not like that it was inherent existence some at one time and then it became non inherent existence and uh, later it was never like that from the very start the nature of that all phenomena is empty of inherent nature inherent existence while it is empty of inherent existence at the same time object appear to our consciousness and mind you know form appear to our eye consciousness sound appear to our ear consciousness the smell appear to our smell consciousness uh, you know the taste appear to our you know mouth consciousness the um, kind of feeling you know whether it is cold hot rough soft uh, to our bodily consciousness and then many other objects on our mental consciousness there's appearance of that that is undeniable that is our direct experience yeah, so that is why they are similar you know while they are empty of that but there there's undeniable appearance of the objects to our consciousness um and so that is the example illusion the example and how objects similarly okay um so that is uh, where it keeps mm. And so then, uh, you know, so I think it is important here, Lama Tsong Kappa make again, some clarifications where is it such emptiness, when you talk about such emptiness, the ultimate reality it is not a nihil nihilistic emptiness because a lot of people confuse for that. It is said, you know, at the very beginning when the Buddhism came to West, a lot of scholar when they were reading Nagarjuna's writing, they thought Nagarjuna was nihilism and they wrote a lot about him being nihilism because they couldn't understand fully of his view. Because a lot of his writing are negating, a lot of negations. And he, even though he did talk about interdependence and appearance, but there's that is, you find that not so much of that, mostly is negating. And on the basis of that, then a lot of people misunderstood Nagarjuna was nihilism, you know, and so there's nihilistic emptiness. So he is saying, you know, the view is not a nihilistic emptiness. So that one, or mentally fabricated emptiness, you know, neither is a mentally fabricated emptiness, which means that is not the nature the reality, but our mind kind of fabricating it to be empty. So creating our own emptiness, which is not related with the reality itself. So he's saying neither is a mentally fabricated emptiness or limited emptiness, you know, or limited emptiness means, you know, for example, you know, um, you know, um, when I think when I think of uh, my room being empty of John, it's limited emptiness, you know. When I think of empty of John in my my room, is a limited because John is not empty everywhere, you know. He's not empty in his room, his house, so where the emptiness is some in some object but is not in all objects so therefore it is saying um it's not limited emptiness and then it will also come later also that emptiness is not something you know just something that you cannot meditate 
and that by meditating on that, that you can overcome the delusion, you know, because some, we can have some understanding of some emptiness and we can try to have, you know, in our mind, empty everything, okay? We can empty every, all the thoughts, all the concept, everything, but that kind of emptiness will not be able to cut the barrier of that fundamental ignorance. So by taking that on the path, on the meditation, you cannot achieve liberation nirvana, such emptiness. So I think that is where, um, um, so you, you see there, is, there could be a lot of misunderstanding uh, of emptiness if we don't understand the subtlety of those emptiness. A lot of practitioners confuse something which is not emptiness for them thinking they had the uh, realization of emptiness. Because, you know, uh, unless you have those very subtlety to really know um, so that we don't get confused some of those mistaken emptiness to be unmistaken emptiness and uh, the realizations. Mm. So in that sense, you know, the, the appearance of God, human, you know, then you know, all um, six realms, you know, um, in six realms, you know, animals, and, uh, you know, God, demigod, um, animals, you know, and human beings, all of them, and all including, you know, Arhat, including the Buddhas, they all are posited as a person and the object that appear as a, you know, physical form, sound, you know, taste, uh, or, or um, yeah, um, um, something touchable, you know, um, and all they are positive as phenomena, you know, that all the object that is not the persons or the being are positive as phenomena when we talk about person and phenomena. So first trying to that. Uh, so then all the persons and phenomena, so it includes all, all phenomena, you know, persons and phenomena, it includes all the phenomena, all the objects, all the things. None of each phenomena have, you know, even the slightest or mere particle of inherent existence by its own side, by its own power. Okay, there's none of them, you know, is established by their own characters. At the same time, while there's no inherently existing persons and phenomena. At the same time, there is a person who is creating the karma, accumulator of the karma. You cannot deny that. Mm -hmm. Accumulator karma, or experience, experience uh, the person who experienced the karma. Mm -hmm. And so you cannot deny that. Um, you know, um, and then, you know, the actions of seeing the, the actions of seeing the physical form, the action of hearing the sound, the object of, you know, smelling the um, smell, the op and all so forth, you know, they all are interdependent actions all those interdependent actions as agent are valid. All actions as agent are valid. So therefore, the emptiness is no, not nihilistic. So that is where Lama Zonga is. Even though we talk about empty of inherent existence, while it is empty of inherent existence, still there is the, the functioning of the actions. There is the subject who is creating the actions. There is the subject who is experiencing the result of such actions that is not being denied even when you say it is inherently existent empty of inherently existent but at the same time you not deny there's a subject who is creating different actions and there is the actions and there is the being or uh, the person who's experienced the result of such action and so therefore 
the action itself, the subject that is being created and the result of this action, they all exist. They, they are not negated. And so they are valid. And so therefore is no nihilism, nihilistic. When you say nihilistic and then because it's emptiness, therefore there is no action. There's no person who's creating action. There's no person who's experienced the result of actions. When you think that way, when you say that, then that is nihilistic. Are we clear? Yeah? So, yeah, I'm good. So if we are clear, then good. Um, because sometimes if you hear, you know, sometimes in certain scriptures or some sometimes certain teachers, sometimes they might not give enough, enough, um clarification explanations and then it become nihilism or they say in emptiness there's nothing you know so when you hear word like in emptiness like as we just recite the heart sutra you know in emptiness there's no form no feeling no discrimination all of that then it's still like there's nothing do you get it it feels like there's nothing such understanding of emptiness or nihilistic view of emptiness, not correct understanding of it. So that is why Lama Zonga is making very clear of that. And so therefore this idea, you know, sometimes you hear, you know, um, you have to practice non-dualistic, you know, the view of non-dualistic. And because you have to practice non-dualistic, you shouldn't have concept of pure, impure, you know, ethical, unethical, you know, good, bad. So when you do that, then you negate all this you know, um, so then mean that means do, I shouldn't be uh, ethical, you know, if I'm practicing a non-dualistic view, so that means I shouldn't have practice of ethical, because the moment I have this concept of ethical, then it is dualistic. Do you get it what I mean? Does that mean I shouldn't create any positive karma? Because the moment I have this concept positive and negative, it is a dualistic. So there can be a, some misunderstanding from such view un, unless there's more clarification, more um, what dualistic view means and um, of those view, uh, you know, so I think that is because um, sometimes it can lead us to uh, that kind of um, view, you know. Mm -hmm. So that is, and then, you know, here, since phenomena Pre-mortality, always been empty like that, and merely understood emptiness is not mentally fabricated emptiness either. So, you know, all the phenomena has been from the very start, very beginning, empty of, the nature has been empty of inherent existence, always. It is not like, they are not empty of inherent existence, but by our mind is creating empty. Do you get it? Like for example, one example of that, it will be here, um, the um, computer in front of me, okay? My computer is in front of me, okay? But then my mind, think and visualize there's no, empty of that computer. Do you get it? Now my mind is visualizing or imagining or thinking this empty of computer in my room. That is fabricating empty. Do you get it? My mind is creating that empty, but that is not the reality. Computer is still there. So what he's saying is the nature of object being empty of inherent existence is not like your mind is just kind of imagining or creating or visualizing something, but its nature has been always like that. And the only difference is now you have understood the nature. Before you have not understood it, now you have understood it. Before you have not discovered it, now you have discovered it, but it has always been that that nature. The only difference is before you have not discovered it, now we have discovered it. Before we have not understood that reality, 
now we are understanding that reality. So that therefore such emptiness is not fabricated, you know, because sometimes when we meditate on emptiness, a lot of time we might be just fabricating. Because we just visualize, imagine, do you get it? Of being empty of that something. And so um, when you visualize and when you imagine, of course it has some other purpose, you know, but in terms of understanding the emptiness, so it is not like that. So that is where the nature is not fabricated. And since all objects of the knowledge are asserted in this manner is not limited emptiness either. And so, you know, it's not like some of the objects are inherently existing and not some of the objects are not inherently existing. It's not like that. Do you get it? You know, um, you know, an example is like, you know, um, the object that we see with our eyes, okay? Objects that we see with our eyes. So it's a kind of form, you know, physical form that we can see with our eyes, you know. Uh, that is the object to see with eyes is a um, limited, you know. Not all objects are that that we can see with our eyes. You know, only some object we can see with our eyes. Some other object we cannot see with our eyes. The nature of that objects, you know, like a form. So the same way is not like some objects are inherently existing and some objects non inherent but all the objects are equally empty of inherent existence. Therefore, it's not limited emptiness. The problem, why, why that is important here, why Lama Tsongkhapa was making important factor here is, you know, if it's a limited emptiness, then you can overcome some of the delusion, some of the uh, um, ignorance that is related with those some objects, and you will not be able to overcome some of the other objects, delusion arising, ignorance arising with other objects because it's limited. Do you get it, what I mean? So that is why, so because it's unlimited, therefore, when you have understanding of that emptiness, you can overcome the ignorance of all the objects. And that is why it makes possible to achieve enlightenment. Easily, when you have that understanding. So, that is that is the uh, the point. So we have to understand why Lama Tsongkhapa is making each of those points. You know, each of them had very profound meaning in that. You know, mm. and then also here this emptiness. When you meditate on that, and with correct understanding, when you have that correct understanding, when you have the unmistaken emptiness, and when you have correct understanding, and when you take that correct understanding of the view on the meditation, on the path, then you can achieve enlightenment. Unlike like some other emptiness, you know? For example, the, the uh, my glass being empty of the tea, if I meditate on that emptiness, the glass being empty of tea, that is, I try to meditate on that, I try to take that on the path, I'm not going to achieve enlightenment. Do you get it? So that is where the point is making, you know? So therefore, that's where, um, where is that? Yeah. That is why through being meditated on, it become antidote to all, any adherence associated with apprehension to existence, the ignorance. Um, and such profound meaning of the view, unmistaken emptiness, is not unsuitable to become object of any mind, whatever, whatsoever. Um, Rather, it can be determined by mean of pure view, and it can be made the object of means of meditation 
that may term pure meaning. There is also not, therefore it is not also not an emptiness that cannot be practiced at the time of path, one with nothing to see or realize, you know? So that is, you know, um, and I think maybe this might be referring to, you know, for example, uh, you know, if I'm just imagining there's nothing, you know, just in my mind, in my meditation, trying to empty everything, just empty, empty everything. So in my mind, there's emptiness. Okay, because I have empty anything, I have empty any sense of objects, thoughts, you know, even I empty even the, maybe it might come a little bit, even the, uh, the awareness that trying to, so I just, you just try to be in that empty without anything, without any thinking, anything, nothing. But you can see for E ones and E ones and that, you are, there's nothing you can really realize from that, you know, that is not going to be ended or to the delusion and uh, uh, ignorance. And so that is through that, you cannot really have the, any realization from that. So that is why it's making. So therefore it has to be the right empty and correct emptiness understanding. Hmm. And so then, uh, you know, um, giving, uh, there's some kind of um, discussions because when we, when we um, present the emptiness or selflessness of person phenomena, then they will always give some example analogy. We already give, you know, like illusion, dream, and uh, reflections of your face in the mirror or the reflections of the moon in the lake and so forth. So, um, so here, you know, if you have an understanding, those all those examples, they are empty of the way they appear to that mind, when you have that understanding, you know, all this example, when you have understanding, if you have understanding of all this, the, the way it appears to your, uh, those objects are not existing the way it appears. So you have understanding emptiness of that appearance. Does that mean, is, will that be, be a understanding of emptiness? So here, and so raising that question, you know, mm -hmm. Because if that is the correct understanding on emptiness, then with that understanding, you should be able to apply that to all phenomena, and then you should be able to have realization of emptiness of all phenomena as you apply to that. As um, Arya Deva, his 400 stanza said, it is explained the share of one thing is a share of everything. So when you have realization of one, one thing, when you have realization emptiness of one thing, then it is like understanding of emptiness of everything. Even though that mind, one mind does not uh, realize emptiness of everything, but once you have realization or emptiness of one object, then it is like, it is almost like understanding of emptiness of all phenomena, because the moment you apply to that object without going through so much logic, reasoning, meditation, you can have easily um, understanding of all of them. You just uh, you know, apply. you just know, oh, it is also like that. Oh, this computer is like that too. Oh, this light is also like that. Oh, this book is like that. Oh, this cup is like that, you know? So you don't have to use same kind of lot of reasoning, logic, investigation like you did at the first time when you have the understanding of emptiness of one object. So that is where, you know, uh, what is emptiness of one is emptiness of all. So, so, you know, that means, you know, the, um, what is emptiness of one, that's inherent nature of one object. Also, that is the same nature of emptiness of all of natures. Um, so here Lama Zongaba says, you know, one can realize the emptiness of other phenomena. So once you have understanding of one emptiness, it can, it become easy, but it doesn't mean that with one mind, you realize everything, you know, all the uh, emptiness with one, so that is one. Uh, so here, the next one, Lama Tsongkhapa, as I mentioned, you know, um, when you have understanding, you know, um, 
with the reflections uh, in the mirror, your face, and when you realize it is, M is MJ of the way it appeared to you, because that you understand, or oh, that the way it appeared to you is in that ref in that mirror, your face appear, but you know that there is no face in that mirror. Yeah, even though it appear as though the your face in the mirror, but then you realize, oh, it is just a reflection, but there is no mirror in uh, there is no face in the mirror, so you have a realization of that. Same with uh, you know uh, in the dream, you know. Um, someone who had dream and they know it is a dream. So in the dream, you know, someone tried to kill you, you know, and even though there's appearance of someone trying to kill you, but when you know you is a dream, you know that there's no one really who is trying to kill you. So you know that it is, uh, understand the way it appears, it does not exist. And the same thing when magician create, you know, um, horse, elephant and so forth, you know, there's appearance of real horse, like a real horse or elephant as is there, but the magician himself or some other people realize, oh, there's no real horse or there's no real uh, elephant there. It is just a, um, a trick or creations of that trick. And so you realize that even though it appear, but it is, empty of that the appearance. So when you have that realizations, because you realize, even though it appears, but it is empty of that appearance, does it, you have a realization of emptiness or not? So that is the question being asked here. And so Lama Tsongkhapa is saying, just by itself, you do not have the realization of emptiness. You know, because, you know, while you are, you realize, you know, um, there is no, face in the mirror, because you understand it's just a reflection. So it is not as it is appear, but still you might be grasping the reflection itself, the, the mirror itself, the face itself as a inherent existence. So that, that understanding cannot destroy the grasping of inherent existence of the reflection itself. You know, do you get it? And same thing, even though we are understanding, you know, um, uh, in the dream of that person as a dream and it's not real, but at the same time, you might be grasping that dream as inherent existence. So therefore that understanding cannot destroy the grasping of, um, um, inherently grasping or inherently existing dream and same with the horse uh, and the elephant created by the uh, magicians. So basically that is what he's saying. So even though you, you use that as example analogy, but when you have um, just by understanding that is empty of the way it appeared to that, ob ob that object to that mind, then it doesn't necessarily uh, lead to understanding or emptiness of true empty of truly existence. So that is, um, so Geshala. Yes. So question. So, so then is the implication that, um, it's not enough to, to real, to realize that the, um, that something is, um, empty of the way it appears to to me but i also it's also necessary to realize at the same time how it functions and yet is empty of inherent existence is that what is that what it's trying to say no i think here i think uh it is not trying to talk about the appearance itself at this point you know of course we we lamzong was explain about the like illusion appearance the illusion where you need both of them but here, the caution is, you know, because, uh, you know, everything, all phenomena are emptiness. Um, they are empty of the way they appear. So that is what, you know, they are empty of the way it appears to our mind. And the example analogy giving like a, the reflections and uh, the, um, the 
the the creation of the magicians and the dreaming like that. So the questions are arising. So what about when I realize dream as a dream, reflection as a reflection instead of really being the face. When I realize magicians as a magic instead of really being the real horse of that, we, we, when you have that realization, is that really, un, would you have the understanding on emptiness or not? If you don't have understanding emptiness, then why you use that example? So that, that next question comes, you know. But if we, when you have that realization, then it means, you know, ordinary people can have a realization of emptiness because many people can understand, uh, even without understanding Madhya Mega emptiness, they could have understanding reflection as a reflection, dream as a dream, um, the creation of magician as a, just a trick or then, so that is the way it is saying. Um, so yeah, so that is where <clears throat> at the end of that verse is where it says, you know, even if you realize illusions as empty of being horse and elephant in terms of the, uh, in terms of the magicians, and that the appearance in the dream are empty of what they appear to you. So dream knowing as a dream. You have not found the Madhya Mega view realized no objects are like illusion and dream in that moment. And so, and so that then if that is the case, why do you take that for example? So then, then it comes the next one. Why do you take them as an analogy? So then it is said, you know, when you use that example, then it becomes easier to understand emptiness by using that example, because then you have some idea about how things appear, does not always exist the way they appear because of that example. Do you get it? Because of that example, you have understanding. Things does not exist always the way it appears to us for a dream, like a dream, like a reflections, like a magician's trick. So we all have that understanding that, you know, even though they appear to our mind in that moment that, but they, are, they do not exist the way it appeared to us. So when you understand that, then you use same way in that way, even though all objects appeared in hidden existence in our mind, but they do not exist in hidden existence. Do you get it? So you use that. So using that, just as like that, just as like that, even though all the objects to our ordinary mind, it appears as in hidden existence, but even though there is appearance of inherent existence, but it is empty of inherent existence, like the reflection, the, like the dream, like the magic, magician creation. So, so then that is, with that, be, through that example, then is, it is easy to understand emptiness of reflection of the dream and magician, then the emptiness of the physical form, sound, and all others. So because it is easy to understand the emptiness of that one easier, so then therefore it, it, it is taking that as an example or analogy. So that is what it is saying. Are we, are we, are we clear on that? I'm not clear, Gessler. Could you repeat that? Repeat your explanation again, please. Uh, Even though when we have understanding of reflections in, in relation to reflections of the dream, whatever appear in our dream, whatever appear in that, uh, in that reflection, whatever is creation of the magicians, we know that once you know it is a trick, once you know it is just a reflections, but nothing, and it, once you know it is a dream, you know that things does not exist the way it appears to our mind, yeah? So we will have that understanding. And to have that understanding, we don't need to have the emptiness understanding, okay? Even normal people can understand that. But when you have that understanding, it helps us to understand the emptiness when they give, just like that you have like the reflections and the dream and like, same way, even though things appear to our mind inherently, but they are empty of inherent existence. So you, you so that oh. helps us to understand 
things does not exist the the way it appears to us, just as you already understood that same way, in the same way, things appear inherently exist in our mind, but they do not exist inherently. I see. Okay. Okay. I yeah? understand that. Oh. So through that, then it helps us to have the end. It is not understanding emptiness it's because we, when we understand that, then we understand, you know, that um, the, the way it appears and the way thing exists does not concord, you know, um, uh, with through those examples and through those examples then also we begin to understand with also the way thing really exists is non inherent existence, but to our mind it appears inherent existence they don't concord therefore they are not truly existing therefore they are false you know so then just like those are false those examples are false also in this way the way thing appears to us are also false and through that then uh, it so it is said, uh, it is, um, and you know, so here it is saying, you know, even though all the objects, whether it's the example or the uh, non examples, you know, even though they all are um, empty of truly or inherent existence, mm -hmm. but we took this example, it's easy to understand emptiness of reflections than emptiness of this computer because of that example. When you, because with that example, the appearance and the thing ex does not exist same way because we already have gross understanding of that in this. So when you use that, just like that, even though reflection appear inherently, but it is empty of inherently existing that reflection itself. So then it becomes easier to understand within emptiness within that example than uh, such as like computer. Or the persons and any other objects. So that is why that is why that such example or analogy is given. Even though by having a realization of um, MD of the way it appeared does not necessarily give you the understanding of um, emptiness itself. But the reason why they use that uh, analogy or reasons. And I think Lama Tsong Kava again explaining a little bit of the a little further meaning of the the um, uh, the previous verse from the um, hundred verse um, four thousand four hundred stanzas. I think that trying to expand a little meaning on that. The meaning intended, and also here, by stating that need to sequence in which one of these two is earlier is other letter is not. That by relies by emptiness of one person, one phenomena of emptiness, all phenomena as explicitly relies. Rather, rather, the meaning is that when the mind turns to whether other whether other phenomena do or do not exist truly, is able to realize it. So I think I already mentioned before, you know, once you have understanding of one one emptiness, whatever that is, whether it's a reflection, whether it's a magic, whether it's a computer person, whatever. Once you have that understanding, it doesn't mean you have, you have understood the emptiness of all phenomena. But when you have that understanding, then when you just, you know, apply without going so much detail uh, meditations, you can have understanding so easily. And uh, so you have the potential very easily and like that. So, uh, so that is where it's meaning. Um, so then next, you know, there is a, from the ornament of clear knowledge, there is a, about the dream, even a dream to view all that all phenomena like dreams. So, you know, even in dream, we try to train to see them as a dream because in even dream sometimes we we confuse it as a real you know and therefore we get a lot of fear you know for in the dream you know someone chasing us you know mountain lion chasing us running and we don't realize it is a dream so we have a lot of fear running falling off the cliff and maybe when you wake up maybe you are even sweating you know physically even sweating, you know, beating your heart so fast as though it's almost really happening because we didn't realize it was dream, in a dream. But in the dream, when you realize it's a dream, 
just as you don't have that same fear when you wake up because you know it's a dream same way when in a dream when you realize it's a dream then you don't have that same kind of reactions or the fear and so forth you know so is similarly we try to train and you know like a dream all the time um, just as you train dream you no know? so <clears throat> so like all the dreamlike phenomena should be viewed as dreamlike so so in a, in a way again all phenomena are dreamlike illusion like you know mirrors like you know and they are all that and so we have to realize and be uh, understood they are like a dream they are like an illusion they are like a mirrors instead of believing those objects as being truly or inherent existence um, because oh i think the time is running mm. so here <clears throat> i think here is Lama Tsongkhapa gives some more clarifications where we can mis misunderstand uh, having a realization of clear light, I mean, uh, illusion like or dream like um, when it is not. So, keep some few examples here. You know, here, likewise, in the realizations, in the vision of meditative experience during the concentration meditations, you know, so you, when you are in deep meditative concentration, you know, when you are in deep meditation concentrations, when all the thoughts and uh, visions and everything kind of kind of thought and concepts start to dissolve and you have certain kind of visions, you know, like that, like a pot and a woolen cloth are empty of what they appear to be, you know. So even though in that, you know, even though if there's some small kind of appearance of those objects, but you know, you can see they are not so real because in your deep meditation, you know, they are not real. You know, they are not real. You know, in that meditation, you are, you know, they are not real. In, even in your mind, in your vision, you have those different objects appearing in your mind. You know that it's not really wood, woolen cloth, even it appear, even though it appeared a cups, pot, you know, it is not the cups, it is not a pot, you know, so. Mm. But that does not have, does not have same meaning as realization that they are like illusion of dream that are not inherently established, you know, because when we talk about illusion like unmistaken illusion like or dream like then in that understanding then you have understanding of the the object is empty of inherent existence while it is in of the object is empty of inherent existence at the same time there is the appearance so that is when you but here even though you know that the the parts whatever object it appears in your meditations you know it is not real but it doesn't necessarily mean they are empty of inherent existence you don't necessarily mean that you know you just know it is not part you just know it is not a woolen it's not just cup the appearance cup in my cup is not a cup real cup so, so it is you you see empty of cup at that point but it doesn't mean you see empty of you know inherent existing so therefore that doesn't give that is not the full, real, unmistakable meaning of illusion, like because of that. No. Mm. Therefore, you should investigate well. You know, so we have to analyze at the very beginning. We have to analyze emptiness, not just about shutting down all our thoughts, concepts, feelings, and empty our, emptying our mind with all these thoughts. You know, so that is sometimes because there can be a misunderstanding about that. So at the very beginning, you have to investigate, analyze what is the reality of that objects, whatever object. You have to truly, truly analyze deeply, profoundly. And um, so that is why investigate well the uncommon manner appearing like illusion, which is set for in scriptures. And by following, you know, just just not by trying ourselves, you know, because we can't trust our mind at the very beginning, you know, our mind analyzes. So you have to trust from the scriptures, those are written by the experienced masters, experienced meditators, and through their, by relying on some of the technique method, then we investigate, you know, just like 
previous scientists have come and they have investigated and you have those techniques and you realize to do more your own work. And similarly, you know, trustworthy that uh, scripture treaties definite meaning saying that they should not be known. They should be known as to be like an illusion regime. So they're, you know, on all the Indian masters, uh, Sutra and Indian masters, there are many teachings and writing on why it is like illusion, why it is like a dream. And so we have to study that and on the basis of that then taking that as a tools then we try to investigate analyze so then it it, it give an example i think i i think i already mentioned it but um having said this a child still unfamiliar to what we apprehend reflection and mirror as face you know it could be child it could be animal you know sometime i saw some video you know where monkey or dog barking when they see the reflection there because they think there's a dog or they see there is a monkey in one time monkey was you know just kind of just jump you know the moment he saw there you know and then there are dogs you know um barking and then you see that barking and, uh, and it is strange because again like they don't realize it is a reflections you know they think it is real there so similarly sometimes child also can have that kind similarly you know not knowing reflection and reflections you know or spect spectator who does not know illusion apprehend illusory appearance as a horse 11 and so forth you know someone who have never been exposed to make that kind of magic you know who have never know who have never been exposed who never know about magic you take to some kind of um, magicians and then you are looking and then whatever the magicians are creating that person will feel is so real what is happening is real. They wouldn't know it's a trick. It's a creation of that, you know. Um, so they get confused and mistaken, you know. Um, and then someone in dream who is unaware of this dream, as I mentioned before, they will apprehend appearance as whatever appearance they mount uh, in dream, mountain, or so forth as real. Resemble each other. On other hand, an older person familiar with the world know that reflection is a reflection. is not really fierce. Magician know that his creation, not real horse and elephant, but it is just his trick. Uh, a person who in a dream know is a dream. The person who is a dream and who is aware of dream know that it's a dream. And so they resemble each other in that they know their particular appearance untrue, you know. So what, what they appear to that mind is untrue, unreal. But none of those have none of two have found the view of suchness, you know, and we already kind of discussed before. Um, it is just a gross understanding of um, not true of the appearance in a more gross level. Okay, so I think maybe uh, our time is running. I think we let me see. If, um, Is this essence in the rely on concept of depending arising an easier way to understand? Well, you know, I think um, uh, depending arisings, it will come, Lama Tsongkhapa will come next time when he present the, the substance of phenomena, you know. So again, we have to, is, is, we have to learn all different reasoning logics, you know, because if we just learn one, it might not be so effective. You know, just like anything, when you are doing some exercise, you have to learn many different forms and see what works for you. And sometimes each, each of those different exercises support each other things, you know. Your one exercise support the other exercise. And so, so sometimes uh, we tend to, you know, I can't have just one meditation or one, and I don't know why complicate with studying, learning so many different, so many different, um, you know, um, views or so many different reasoning and logic you know so i think um it, it, because the more reasoning the more logic the more investigative you are the more um your understanding become more deeper more profound you know uh, and unshakable you know because you have understood that with not just one reason it's not like just one proof there are so many proof so many data so many proof your 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 is your your mind cannot be unmovable when you have that realization on understanding basis that you know 
if you have if you have seen you know something you saw some articles some news of something about some proof or one thing but still you might not be so hundred percent convinced because you know un until you see so many different many 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 others um uh what do you call and then someone says something and then your mind starts to be shaky you know but when you have used so many different proof reasoning logic and then once you reach it that certainty with all of that then you once you have that understanding then your mind will be unshakable unshakable nothing can shake you and so i think that is why it's uh, important to have uh, under study and understanding and using all of that okay so we do the dedications um Geshela? yes um i see that tony has raised his hand okay if there is time i have a question yes please um if a person came to you and said to you that their most profound, that their deepest direct experience of emptiness mm -hmm. was during meditation, mm -hmm. like um, sh uh, the balance of shamatha and vipassana, mm -hmm. and within that meditation, recognize the emptiness of their own mind. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that person about that recognition, whether that was valid or not? I can't say. I think you have to understand more. You know, you have to. You have to. You, you have to ask more questions. You know, in because when you say I understood emptiness in that meditations, what does that means? And uh, emptiness and um, emptiness of the individual's own mind. So again, what does that mean? Uh, empty of individual uh, individual mind, um, because it could mean different thing for different people. So it has to be very precise. That is why Lama Zongra was trying to go so detailed, precise, because sometimes we use the same word emptiness and then and even description very similar but they are not exactly same so it has to be um precise to really see whether it's the correct understanding whether it's the even it is correct whether it's the subtle understanding whether it's a gross understanding someone can have a gross under emptiness but not subtle understanding of emptiness and uh, and all of that so so um say this person had understanding of the emptiness of objects, any object. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's reflection in in the mirror, um, a mountain, a galaxy, what whatever it might uh, might be. Mm -hmm. um, their understanding of the emptiness of their own mind made the, their understanding of the objective world mm -hmm. clearer. Mm -hmm. I guess still because maybe. it was a direct, because it was a because it was totally direct. There was nothing that came from the outside. And, and of course, in emptiness, there would be neither outside nor inside, <laughs> mm -hmm. neither, neither out there nor, nor in, in, in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Um, that would be the most accurate way that I can think of for this individual at the moment? Yeah. Um, first of all, I think it would be difficult because I myself does not have direct realization. <laughs> so one thing I want to make clear, I can only describe through the 
uh, that some of the studies that I have done from the, all the scriptures and some of meditation Good. that I mm -hmm. try to do a little bit, um, whether that is again correct or not, you know. Um, but um, still, still, I think that description still for me is uh, not clear enough to describe what is the correct okay. or not correct. Um, when, I think. when the words possibly use is drilling down and drilling through um, all of the arisings of mind, the various concepts, constructs, etc. One One of the thing, maybe another way of putting that will be, you know, I will um, describe the dead persons. Does he or she still have even after she, he or she has that experience, realizations, does he or she has clinging attachment to their body, their belonging, their friends, their families? If they that, still have that, maybe they still, you know, if there is still some kind of frustrations, some kind of agitations, some kind of, you know, <laughs> um, anger, um, resentment and delusions, that means, you know, if it is correct understanding, then it will have effect on that. All this negative delusion will be definitely less than before, less intense, less occurrence. And even it occur, it go very fast. It does not last. And so that is, that is the effect of the, um, the that realization of emptiness. And what I would say about this what I would say about this person is um, the glimpse. Glimpse, yes, it could be a glimpse. And, 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 and that's all it was for them. However, it nevertheless created a deep foundation of um, the understanding of, um, of, em of emptiness, but it was not 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 liberation yeah it could be it could be definitely as you say, you know it can be a glimpse of that um mm -hmm. you know but and, and his, holiness, holiness, his holiness also shared his stories you know uh, I mean, or his experience not a story his experience you know he said he had a feeling of experience long time ago of through his meditation and practice sense of no self at all you know and there is no sense of grasping to self at all because he came to that kind of uh, experience there. realization there's, 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 there's no there. sense of any kind of clinging grasping to the self but when he look he still he even though he doesn't have grasping to the self but he has grasping to his body his mind and other things so then he realized it is not a subtle understanding of emptiness just as Nagarjuna said, you know, until you have realization of um, um, as long as you have a grasping of um, to your aggregate, sure, you have still not under have the correct realization of the sadness of the persons. And same thing. And so His Holiness says, you know, then he realized it was just a, not a subtle understanding of emptiness according to Prasangika. It was a gross understanding of settlerness according to the other schools. And of course, it is still held, it still have, but it, it, it cannot destroy the very other subtle. And exactly. then again, he, he tried to study and meditate and practice. And then finally, um, he had the experience and realization of um, the subtle emptiness. And after that, he said he hardly have any delusion arise, you know. And even when something arises sometime, it's just like it comes and goes quickly. It doesn't. It doesn't last, and it doesn't stay there. You know. So yeah. um, no, that's how I understood it from um, from from her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so yeah. So so I think that is yeah. But it is it is it is it is hard to kind of you know. It is hard to. Dis describe someone's experience authentic not authentic uh, 
unless you have your self experience, you know. I can only kind of describe a little bit here and there, but uh, you know, I'm not describing from my direct experience. So it, it is a it is a different. Cool. Okay. Okay, so we do the dedications. Thank you. Thank you. Due to the merit of this virtuous action, may I quickly attend the state of Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel Bodhicitta that has not arise and arise and grow, and may that which has arise and not diminish but increase more and more. Then we go to long life prayers. The wish grinding, which fulfilling due source of every single benefit and happiness in the world to the incomparable kind of the years or abysses. May all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. You who uphold the subdue moral way, who serve as a bountiful bearer of all sustaining, preserving, and spreading my journal virtuous doctrine, who masterfully accomplish manifesting prayer, honor it, you severe myself and others, your disciples, please, please live long. Be never one to you whose kindness exists that of all conquerors for those wandered off in the far off, far off places, especially the West, mindful of your love and concern for us in intention descending again in a family of far distant land. We make this request of Lama. Please, please live long. Thank you very much, everyone. And I hope you have a good discussion, even though we are a little bit late today, but okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.